A lot of things have changed since EU4 first came out in 2013, that's right, it's almost 10 years, well going on 10 years now, since this game has been out, and I think it's time that we revisit the original version of EU4, the launch version, and think of this as an exercise in appreciating what we have right now, because the game has really come a huge way since then, and you'll see right now why. So at first glance, obviously the thing that, you know, is the most uh, interesting is the fact that the map's completely different. We have way less provinces now, and way less features. There's not even a timeline button over here. Where do be the timeline? How to timeline right now, right? The second thing, personally, I noticed is that Brandenburg's only got three provinces. So off the bat, I'm, I, I hate the launch version. It is absolute dog schnapple. And if we tag into Brandenburg for a sec, we see the sprites are different and the interfaces are completely rustic. The government tab shows the reform here and we don't have other government reforms. Instead, we can change our government type with admin points after we've researched certain technologies. So once we get the admin tech tool, we can change over to the administrative monarchy, then absolute monarchy, and so on. It was very rudimental and basic. It's basically the exact same system that we had in uh, EU3, and for that matter, the building system is the same one from EU3 as well, with temples giving a flat plus one tax, not a percentage modifier, then courthouses giving the first percentage modifier for tax, then we had the spy agency, which is not in the game anymore, town halls also gave tax and defensiveness, and then we had other special buildings building like the college with extra spy defense, cathedrals giving again flat tax income, conscription centers giving a massive amount of manpower, 50% local manpower and land force limit, minting house with the local production efficiency and the stock exchange with goods produced plus 50%? This is huge guys! But rest assured, there's a reason why it is so big. It's because we don't have development anymore. You probably noticed there's no admin, diplo, and military development. That was implemented way later down the line. Instead, what we do have here, we have a value for our tax, which is different based on each province here. So we got seven tax value in Berlin, six in Potsdam, and so on. And of course, we do still have uh, our production and trade values. Also take note, every province province has a fortification. We got level 2 forts in Brandenburg, Potsdam and Rupin. So whenever you go to war, get ready for a very long and hard war because you're gonna have to siege down a ton of things just to win that particular engagement. Launch version E4 was super similar to EU3 to be fair. The mana system did not matter as much when it comes to development, but it did matter when building stuff because building things actually cost mana points. 10 mana points to build any sort of building. So for this first row, you needed admin mana, then military mana and diplo mana, and then again, admin, diplo, and military. Essentially, mana points was very annoying because unless you had a lot of mana points, you couldn't build buildings, the most basic of things, since they cost mana and money. The ideas were very different too, since we had no development cost reduction. In exchange, we had building power costs, so it cost less mana points to build buildings for example when you get the, the quantity idea here unlocked and we also used to have the annoying hostile core creation cost on us <laughs> I remember this uh, as the Barbary states here and as the uh, Valachians because they have this in their national ideas or they had it in the national ideas. Valachian tradition giving plus 100 for creation cost, meaning anybody that would take these provinces would pay 100% more admin points to core it up. A lot of countries had different colors also, like Bavaria here had a very different color and it only had three provinces. France was actually surprisingly similar to how it is now, but Auvergne had a different color. I actually like this color more for Auvergne and Bourbonnais had only one province by comparison. It's basically France went through a lot of changes with the most recent update. They actually kind of look similar to what they did at launch whilst Burgundy along the way lost the uh, Netherlands and instead has just unions over various duchies here. Ireland also was only five provinces compared to the million provinces that we have right now. Overall I think that the uh, Iberian lands are almost untouched. I mean the only difference is that they increase
increase the amount of provinces, but not by much, mostly in Aragon and Portugal. And I think they also split uh, Galicia in four different uh, provinces, didn't they? Some other color changes, like Caramont's color is a lot better, I believe, in the launch version. I don't know why they went with a different blue. A lot of nations simply did not exist, like uh, Beluzero, Rostov, and Odoyev did not exist at the start of the game. The famous Memel, which was a square province initially, and then a lot of reshaping happened in this area. It's almost not possible to imagine that Teutons look like this when they released the game. I mean, it's just absolutely cursed, isn't it? Timurids was also unified. It did not have the vassals, so it was considerably stronger when the game was out compared to now it basically can always just collapse instantly depending on, you know, who plays it. And it looks like Yarkand also had a massive chunk of Chagatai by comparison. I actually didn't even remember this bit here. I'm curious what this looks like. Wow, Buriata was available from the launch. What? Didn't remember this. Why did they choose to make this colonial land when at launch this was actually owned by Buryatia in 1.0 uh, or 1.1? I feel like this is a bit of a loss that we have because it would have made this area a little bit more interesting with the Buryatia available from day one. They did switch on over though and they made some of these other provinces here be colonized by Oirats whilst uh, I guess giving this to Mongolia and other parts. Fortune also also owns a lot more of Mongolia from the beginning and in the daimyo lands which uh, was massively reshaped during the uh, mandate of heaven dlc we have a ton more daimyos just in this area here we have in the current version like five daimyos or no not even five we have like seven eight daimyos and there's only two here at launch shiba and date massive increase in density when it comes to uh, the nations in the japanese islands ming almost looks untouched though like, i highly doubt anything happened here except maybe a few extra no, not even extra provinces. I really believe Ming was not touched here at all. Then again, I'm not super familiar with the uh, shapes of the Ming provinces. So maybe they did add some extra ones in here. Not like that would actually make any difference though. One thing I do not miss at all is the fact that Africa had way less provinces. And the entirety of Central Africa all the way up to the southern bits were not colonizable. It was just wasteland. So that means you could not go from Central Africa or from Congo to Mutapa. You would literally have to colonize around just to get to Mutapa from Congo. So that is a great change. We even have the Interlacostine area now available. You guys should check out my Kitara video if you haven't already, by the way. And of course, in the New World, way less natives compared to what we have now. Even in Central America, a lot less uh, natives and pretty much no flavor really at the launch version. Oh my god, don't get me even started on the mission system. This is the mission system, guys. We don't have any cool focus Focuses, mission focuses, whatever you want to call them. We have this. This is the agenda from the estates in the current version. They basically ported the old mission system to the agendas. And yes, the estates don't even exist in this version of the game. And in my opinion, the most cursed thing with the launch version is the fact that they still had the old westernization system. <laughs> basically, in order to become a western tech nation, you need to have a neighbor which is seven technologies ahead of you. You, and whilst you westernize, you lose stability, you get advisor cost increase. It is just horrible, horrible system. But the reality is that the uh, units at the launch version, well, they you had to westernize. You had to westernize because otherwise you'd fall behind with everything and the western nations would just crush everybody that is not a westernized nation. That's why starting in Asia in 1.1 version was pretty much a death sentence unless you're ready for a lot of pain. Oh wow, I actually I actually did not remember Urbino being this big and the papal states only have two provinces. Oh, that is so cursed. Also, Tuscany exists from the start. No, uh, Florence. Modena also exists from the start. And Ferrara is pink. Okay. I'm gonna let the game play a little bit. I'm curious to see how the AI reacts in the base version of the game compared to how it works now. I know there's been a lot of AI changes also. Let's also check whilst we're at it the cultural map mode. And I already saw the first thing I, I really don't like. Yes, at launch Romanian was a part of the South Slavic culture group. Whilst the Hungarian, which by the way, most of Transylvania was Hungarian. That is really, really holy shit. 
shit, that is so bad. Oh my god. What is up with this culture map mode, dude? Oh, this is so disgusting. Macedonia was Greek. Albanian was also part of South Slavic. Wait, I think it still is a part of South Slavic, right? Yeah, I think so. There was quite literally no Slovak. There was just Hungarians all over Slovakia, too. PDX just decided, oh, Slovakians, no, they, they're not, they don't exist. It's just like, uh, you know, it's a fairy tale. One thing that was good and I wish they kept in is the fact that Turkish is in the same culture group as Azerbaijani and Turkmeni, the uh, Oguz culture group, which actually is accurate. The Turks are Azerbaijanis and the Turkmen are the closest out of all the countries in this area, essentially. So surprised that they added Turkish to the Levantine group and they added Azerbaijani to, what was it now, like Persian, I think, or something like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that they do most of these changes for balance purposes, but, um, you know, you can still have balance and make it a little bit more accurate. Like, this was balanced, in my opinion. Turkish, Azerbaijani, Turkmeni was a fairly big culture group, right? Also, we had more Greeks here. In half of Chandar, we had uh, the province of Sinop was predominantly Turkish Orthodox. Oh, wow. The Ottomans actually start with cores on them? Hold up a second. I'm curious. Oh, my God. Ottomans have cores on so many provinces at the start. That is not fair. <laughs> the Ottomans is as strong as it is, man. Let's check the Byzantines. The Byzantines did not have cores on everything. They just had the cores that they have even in the current version, I guess. I guess they also added Kirklisi for the Byzantines now. Albeit, in 1444, to be fair, Kirklisi was directly owned by the uh, Byzantine Empire. This entire area was all the way to Burgas. Good old Corfu also exists. It starts as a vassal of uh, Venice. This was recently removed, which is kind of weird because Corfu actually has an achievement where you have to start as them and then uh, you can get that particular achievement. The Arabian Peninsula also sees a lot of uh, centralization compared to the current version. We don't have Rasids, Yemen, and so on separate. We just have one mass of Yemen with a really different color as well. Also, the HRE did not have different colors on the HRE map for uh, Emperor and the other guys. It was basically different shades of green, not separate colors. So I'm glad to see that little quality of life improvement was added to the game along the way. I think that probably was in the Emperor DLC. I'm not sure. Since in the Emperor DLC, they also changed the HRE screen with the vastly improved new HRE screen that we have now. Holy mother of god, Burgundy just got a huge chunk out of the French lands. Oh, I just remembered. Burgundy used to be one of the strongest nations before when this came out. And even in EU3, Burgundy could actually grow to be the uh, best version of France, let's call it. As expected, the Byzantines have been uh, schnippeldorped by the Ottomans very early on. Oh, I just realized Japan actually started from the beginning with uh, Japan actually owning Kyoto and then integrating the rest of their vassals since we didn't have the uh, daimyo system properly implemented at launch. No, they actually started as a shogunate. All right, fair enough. And I'm guessing they changed over after you unify Japan, you become an empire. Yes, that's when they became a regular feudal monarchy. I know I talked about the fact that they've actually made the mission system before into the new agenda missions, let's call them. But, um, um, it did have some parts which were not so bad, like the fact that you had three different options and you could choose between the three and you could quickly do some of these, like say here, become the strongest trade power in Nippon, and then after you do that mission, you can choose instantly a new mission. That was pretty cool because if you were good at the game, you could basically use this to snowball and get even stronger really, really quick. But that being said, it was a system in need of massive change, so I'm glad that they did change it. Oh, actually, they did have the Daimyo reforms even before. All right, so I guess the major change was just the fact that there was less daimyos. Holy mother of God, what just happened in the Timurid lands? Persia just broke free. Was this an event? I don't even remember, man. <laughs> Holy snaps, they took half of the Timurid lands. This has to have been an event. Otherwise, this would not normally happen since the Timurids were really, really strong in the, the early versions. And rebels did not usually enforce their demands that easily at the start. Wow, Persia is even attacking the Timurids now. Now, Persian conquest of Konjikala. Yellow Shervan. Kind of reminds me of the fact that Fars is also, was also yellow at some point. And the Burgundian inheritance happened and they got split between the Austrians and the French. Feels bad, man. The Burgundians were on their way to actually, uh, you know, not die off. <laughs> I also really like seeing that Pomerania was unified at this point. It was not divided into two different nations. The density of provinces in the uh, Holy Roman Empire was way 
way less before. I mean, there's got to be at least 50 new provinces added after the uh, multiple updates. We got 44 princes. That's it. That's nothing. All together with the princes, electors, and free cities and the newest update, I think it's like 78. So that's like almost double the amount of uh, HRE nations. Hey, somebody released Kiev in uh, Hungary. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. And Croatia's got a super cool map color. What? Wow, this is way better than the purple, man. Okay, legit question, guys. Uh, is the island of South Georgia still in the game in U4? Because I don't remember this still being in. Did they remove this island completely? Or have I just been ignoring this when I was colonizing South America up until now? And same for St. Helena. I don't remember there being a St. Helena anymore. Did they remove these islands or is it just my imagination? And speaking of colonization, there's a lot less nations all around the uh, eastern parts of the map. Nobody in Australia, nobody in New Zealand, nobody in the Pacific or Papua for that matter, and a ton less nations even around Brunei and Sumatra. Suffice to say this area is completely different now compared to the launch version. Explain to me why the Ottomans have 84 out of 50 53 naval force limit here. Why do they go so much over their naval force limit as the Ottomans? I mean, I'm not saying that they cannot afford it, obviously. They're getting 22 ducats, which is really not bad. This kind of makes me realize, though, that at launch, E4 was almost flavorless like there's no special governments like for example the ottomans start with a despotic monarchy so they don't have the uh, cool ottoman government they don't have the janissaries they don't have the pasha system and not only the ottomans pretty much nobody has anything compared to eu3 which when eu4 was launched i have to say that eu3 was actually more enjoyable like sure eu4 had better graphics and eu4 obviously was the newer game with a lot of potential as we've seen in the long run in the past nine years eu4 has definitely lived up to its name and is 100 percent value for money since people when they buy this game they play it for thousands of hours i know that there's a big complaint about you know the fact that it costs hundreds of bucks to actually own the entire game but the truth is that even though you pay this, these hundreds of bucks you will play it for a very long time also you probably don't need to pay hundreds of bucks when you can just buy it on discount on humble bundle almost every year they have discounts and you buy it for 17 to 20 five bucks on average this also brings back memories of the fact that the ottomans were super strong in the early versions of the game almost nobody could match the ottomans i mean even now the people struggle to fight against them right but there is a chance now compared to the early game when it was virtually impossible to do anything against them oh and i just noticed there's no impassable terrain here so there's direct connection between georgia and the northern bits you don't have to go around same thing goes for the carpathians there's no impassable terrain same thing goes in the northern northern bits of Italy you can just go from one province to another wow that is such a difference dude it's so much better in the recent updates where you have the impassable terrain then you can literally block off the entirety of the Italian peninsula by building four fortifications at each of the province that is essentially a choke point making it really easy for Italian nations to defend themselves what the schnapps Ferrara just went from one province to half of Italy okay <laughs> oh my god the English just fell in a junior membership under the fortune Portuguese. Portugal basically decides what happens in England now. Very, very interesting. And there's a pretty sizable war against the Aragonese, the biggest Gonies in Aragon. One last thing I want to say is that I love the fact that we have Avignon now. I don't know why we don't have Avignon in uh, the recent updates. We should, in my opinion, instead of this just belonging to the papacy, Avignon is the rightful province here, the rightful country here, right? That matter, we should probably also get uh, another enclave of the papacy around this area in Napoli, but that's just wishful thinking right there. There are mods, though, that do these things, like make a very faithful reproduction of the actual map of the world back then. One more thing I want to say is that I noticed the game runs a lot smoother in the launch version compared to now. That's obviously because in the launch version, they didn't have so many DLCs and so much spaghetti code for this game that it was actually, you know, performing as it should. Can we go up to main menu? Let's check. No, it restarts the game. Oh, this is bad. I thought I oh, this is so disappointing. I thought that you could just go back to main menu. Well, actually, that restart of the game was really, really quick. That was not like a proper restart of the game. Hmm. Suspicious. Whatever the case, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had fun checking the 1.1 version since it's been a very long time. Nine years since I checked this. And it makes me grateful to see that the game has been taken care of and that PDX has really put a lot of love into this 
this game along the years most companies would just release the game and then abandon it and just use it as a quick cash grab but no this is a milky cash grab i'm kidding please please i love you paradox don't 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 ban me <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video then you're gonna love this england video up next and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support 